the Bible declares we are in the world we are in it we're not of it and the problem that we have is that we have people in it and in it and now we're trying to fight the enemy in his turf Mm. because I hope you understand that when it comes to warfare territory is so important you, you cannot take on sin in the realm of sin honored, I was so honored today amen to have such wonderful people to help to lead us in a time of praise and worship. Can we just give the Lord praise? Amen. For our guests, ministers today, ministers Michael and Candice Raymond. God bless you. God bless you. And God bless every one of you this morning. So let's get straight into the word today. Uh, I'm teaching a new series entitled The Art of War the art of war the art of war let's go to John chapter 8 the art of war mm. and so my first um, installment today in this series I'm going to talk about knowing your enemy knowing your enemy I think um, we, we live in a time where believers don't like to talk about the enemy you know we, we say that I don't want to glorify the devil you know that, that that's that's what we say sometimes so we don't talk about him but the Apostle Paul says don't be ignorant of his devices and so if you don't want to talk about him then guess what you will be ignorant of his devices when you go to an army base what do you think they're discussing there do you think they're discussing TikTok? in the middle of a war i challenge you to go into a base and see their, their or what is on their table all that is on their table is all the strategies the strengths the possibilities of the enemy and so if you don't prepare uh, let me tell you something before we even get into this uh, uh, an inferior army that is well prepared will always defeat a superior army that is not prepared the key in war is preparation that's the key in war and I want you to understand something that the number one the number one I'm gonna give you the main nugget for today early because I don't want you to be distracted the number one weapon that you have in spiritual warfare is growth let me say that again because some of you missed it growth growing up is the number one your number one strategy let me tell you why let's go before we even go there let's go to Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27 let me show you something here yes do you have this can you put this up in the amplifier let's see it in the amplifier so we're gonna teach today and then amen when the when the helper reach we'll preach in Jesus name amen it says so it will be in that day that the burden of the Assyrian will be removed from your shoulders and his yoke from your neck look at this the yoke will be broken it will be destroyed uh, let me tell you why the yoke will be destroyed because of the fat tell somebody get fat yeah I know you uh, I, don't worry I'll explain what I mean don't worry don't worry but the yoke shall be destroyed because of the fat it is the your, your version will say because of the anointing let me teach you let me t tell you what happens there uh, it is when a, a, an oxen when they bro they buy, they buy an oxen what they would they, they would they would do they would put a yoke upon the oxen's neck 
and usually they buy this oxen young and so with this young oxen they will place a yoke upon its neck on its neck and they will begin to work it and work it and work it and as the oxen eat and gets bigger and gets fatter what happens is that the fat around the oxen's neck breaks the yoke so in other words not everything is broken by prayer some things are broken by growth mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. some things there are some things that you don't just have to go through you have to grow through and so the number one strategy that you should have as a believer is growth what do i, what do I mean by that I, I mean because the enemy we're talking about knowing your enemy the enemy is not omniscient in case you don't understand what that means it means that god is omniscient it means that god is all-knowing there is nothing that god does not know now the enemy is not omniscient so that means that he depends on gathering intel so in other words there's a song that i love to hear it says the enemy learns from your mistakes even if you don't and, and so when he sees that you you fall or you 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 sin here or that you do this and that you cuss somebody out on a monday because you're tired he will say all right she she cuss when she's tired and so here's what i'm gonna do i'm going to create a system now around that and so what happens is that you find that you're tired every day <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you would find that you are tired and that you are you are you are sleepy every day because now he's going to build something what is called a cycle y'all ever heard that word a cycle so in other words the longer you take to grow is the longer you stay in bondage growth is your number one strategy so in other words the same problems i had last year if i have the same problems this year I did not grow I, I reached a place glory in my walk with God where I realized that there are some things I just don't need to pray for amen I, you know because in, in knowing my enemy I understand that my wrestle is not against flesh and blood so in other words the, the longer I take to recognize this is the longer I stay in the trap of the enemy so there are many people who refuse to grow i want you to understand that growth in the kingdom is quite different to growth in the natural uh, growth in the natural is you 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 are considered an adult because you just merely existed for 18 years <laughs> just because you existed so now your parents will tell you you're a man now go and get a job amen and then you go and you get a job then the bankers come and they say you're a man now get a credit card <laughs> hey. and then the next thing you know you are 40 50 years but your mindset is still that of a child paul said when i was a child I spoke as a child I acted as a child I understood as a child but now that I become a man I put away childish things tell somebody grow up just just say just say grow up grow up grow up grow up yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I realized this and I, I learned this the hard way let me tell you why I learned this the hard way because one of my main triggers were people you know I, sometimes I, I you know when, when people, um, you know, begin to tell me, you know, their opinions. I used to study it. I used to, you know, anybody like that? You, 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 you're not going to say amen. But, 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 but you used to take on what people say. Yeah. And, and then I realized something. I realized this is what the enemy used to get at me. And so, so, so part of warfare is knowing, taking intel, taking notes when I slip up. You see, repentance is more than just crying, Lord, I'm sorry. That's not repentance. Repentance is a change of mind, which means it is an intellectual decision. So that means that if I repent, that means I take note of where I was, what I was doing, 
what happened that caused me to do what I was doing how I feel about it and so now I realize that because of that I cannot go those places again tell somebody to grow up yeah 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 we as a church we need to grow up you, you know we, we there, there are people that have, that have been petty last year as believers you're petty last year you're petty the year before you were petty the year before that tell some no amen 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 so so as long as you refuse to grow up the enemy will continue to have this yoke upon your neck and so growth is your number one warfare strategy i was one thing before i began to do business with the invisible and then when i begin i realize that i'm in serious warfare this is not flesh and blood we're talking about now when i realize you know i'm doing business now with the invisible i realize that what the enemy uses is people i want you to understand that heaven and hell use the same methods to advance at you and so both God and the devil uses people our wrestle is not against flesh and blood so let's go on um, let's go to my main text today that was um, introduction amen let's go to my main text John 8 let me show you something here now before i even begin to read the scripture you have to understand that when when it comes to warfare your number one mentor ought to be jesus i'll tell you why because of all the things that jesus did in his walk on the earth um, there's one unique ministry that he had that set him apart from any other teacher and preacher of the time and let me tell you what that was deliverance no one in the old testament casted out demons expelled demons except david who did it indirectly but as far as direct conflict with the kingdom of darkness it was jesus so now we have to take heed to everything jesus says right so let's go so he's teaching us about the enemy know your enemy jesus said to them let's go uh, i'm sorry to give you trouble multimedia let's put that in king jimmy amen amen yes thank you jesus said unto them if god were your father you would love me if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and have come from God. Neither come I of myself, but he sent me. Let's go on. Uh, why do you not understand my speech? Because, even because you cannot hear my word. There are some people, they are not capable of hearing God. And I will, I will show you, I will show you the, the category that the enemy puts people in. You are of your father, the devil. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm convinced today that if Jesus were to walk the earth, I don't know how much churches he would get into. Mm -hmm. Because if I were to come up here and I say to all of you, all of you are of your father, the devil. I'm sure many of you who want an excuse to leave church would leave. Amen. Yeah, so he, he, he said to them, you are of your father, the devil. And the lust of your father, you will do. He was a murderer. Mm, glory. From the beginning. He, he's talking now. He's teaching us about our enemy. He's teaching us about our enemy. And abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. Mm. So we understand that our enemy is not capable of telling the truth. Because there's no truth in him. That's important to know. When he speaketh a lie. <laughs> he speaketh of his own. Uh, just before I, I continue reading let me read this part just permit me to read this part how I want because this is personal for me for he is a liar glory to God he's a liar just tell somebody he's a liar yeah and the father of it know your enemy today our installment is the father of lies 
in knowing our enemy and when i say knowing our enemy i mean the devil is not god's enemy how many of you know that let me tell you why the devil is not god's enemy because god has no enemies in order to be an enemy it means that you have equal opportunity to defeat and since god cannot be defeated there is no one that can stand in the ring with him because first of all there's no ring big enough to hold him and even if we were to get a ring big enough to hold him god would have to create that ring (laughs) oh jesus so and if he creates that ring then the enemy would not be able to access that ring because god's hand is in it so peter said be vigilant be sober for your adversary a lizard cannot go into the ring with Adonai I hope you understand that and so my understanding these things we have to really look at the fact that our enemy is a liar Mm, he's a liar he's a liar he's a liar he is a liar he's a liar last year I I think last year or year before I was in a very difficult season and um, I knew I know I was being tested because God was silent whenever you're going through a season and you're feeling dry just know you're in a test because instructors are not supposed to speak in a test and so in a test uh, is normally the time where God is silent and so I was faced with all types of noise you know there was all types of noise in all different areas of my life and I I remember asking the Lord what is going on here and I heard nothing because I was in a test now of course you would not have that revelation then but you have it now and so in in talking and, and you know the funny thing is that at that time every time I mentioned the word church and God's people he show up so I would be in prayer and in meditation and in intercession about God's people and he would show up I would, I would sense his presence and then I would try to jump at the opportunity I would say Holy Spirit since you're here what do you think about what she said what do you think about what he said uh, you know and then then all of a sudden I see bloop offline you know uh, so he, he would come to, to, to answer as far as the affairs of people but when it came to this situation I was going in going through he was silent But lucky for me, you know, there are certain secrets I know. And so I know that although God himself will be silent, there's a particular office of the spirit that is always open. Uh, Do you know Proverbs talks about what is the theological term, the seven spirits of God, but it's really the seven offices of one spirit. And one of them, based on what James said, he said, if any man lacks wisdom, (laughs) let him ask of God. And so I knew that this office would be open. So what I did, I, I, my wife and they, they went out for the evening. Hallelujah. And so I, I took the opportunity to seek the spirit of wisdom. And so I put on my nice worship music. Amen. I put on deep, powerful instrumentals. And I begin to, to worship the Lord. Because I hope you understand that seeking the spirit of wisdom and seeking the spirit of might is two different things. How many of you know that? Uh, because the, 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 the writer of Proverbs describes wisdom as a woman. And, and so that means if you are seeking the spirit of wisdom, you have to know how to romance God. That's a whole other story. And so, so what happened is that I, I found myself in deep worship and honoring him. And then wisdom showed up. And what he said, he said something to me. It was not much, but it was enough. He said to me when he came, hallelujah, I knew he was there because I already felt the strength of God. Amen, amen. When you understand as a believer the power that you have, I am convinced today that we really don't understand this thing. 
we don't understand this thing uh, you, you know worship is more than just a song as we we sang this morning worship takes you into the realms amen 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 there, there are certain realms that i go into as i begin to worship there are things unspeakable that i cannot even utter happens when i'm in worship you know when when i'm when you're in worship when you're in worship i'll tell you when you know that you're in worship when you know that you're in worship is when you understand and you look at this enemy and you say is this the man something about worship it, it, it makes you taller in the spirit you, you know when you when you begin to worship so as i as i saw the spirit of wisdom he came and he uttered a word to me he said he said he said he is a liar that, that was that was it and, and that was all i needed because i i ran and i searched the scriptures now let me show you what he was saying to me I was listening back to all the voice notes, all the calls, all the different things that people were saying. And I realized there were many voices, but one voice. Mm -hmm. And so in other words, you have to know how to hear. Yes. So, so the, there, there were many voices. The voices were different. But over it and in it and through it, there was one voice. So I know... I begin to understand his voice. You, you see, we are quite content to just know the voice of God. But in warfare, you have to know the voice of the enemy. Because what happens, Jesus, the Bible declared that when Jesus went up to the mountain and was tempted, the tempter came. He's a liar. He came and he said, now, if you are the son of God, and this is why many believers are defeated because we talk too much. That we will talk about it next week. We, we, we talk too much because a liar depends on your information to twist it. So as part, part of warfare, next week I'm going to teach you about a spirit that we don't talk about in the book of Isaiah. It's called a peeping spirit. That's a whole other, we will talk about that next week. He came and he said, if you are the son of God, if you are, if you are, if you are, what, he, what, he, what he's trying to do, he's trying to get Jesus to divulge information. And so all Jesus said, it is written, it is written, it is written. There are some of you, the reason why the, the enemy has inroads in our lives is because we don't know when to. So you, 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 you just hear that you're down for promotion. And you run and you call whoever and whoever. And say, you know, they're considering me for promotion. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the boss man come and say, I changed my mind. You talk too early. Amen. This is warfare that you are in. Yes. You, 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 the, the slightest bit. You remember Samson? He said, tell me where your great strength lies. And what we do, we begin to have conversations <laughs> next week. Next week. So, so he, I want to show you three categories of people. This is this is the three traps, and all of humanity is in these three. You ready? All right. The first trap is deception. Deception. Deception is the first trap. Now let's look at. Let me show you. Let's talk about. Let's talk. Let's, let's go to Second Corinthians. Yeah. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid from them that are lost. So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. It is hid from them that are lost, in whom the God of this world. Now, now we're getting down to business, because in warfare we have to understand whose world we are in. And whose world we are of. Mm -hmm. we, the Bible declares we are in the world. We are in it. We're not of it. And the problem that we have is that we have people in it and in it. And now we're trying to fight the enemy in his turf. Mm. Because I hope you understand that when it comes to warfare, territory is so important. You, you cannot take on sin in the realm of sin. 
all right he said the god of this world the, the, the bible the, the word god is the greek word theos it literally means god come on g god so in other words as long as we are fond of it as long as we are operating in it to a degree that we like it we are under the influence of the god of this world here's what he said hath this is the word i'm looking for blinded blinded the minds of them which believe not so the first category of people these are the people who are both unsaved and saved and un, 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 immature and so in other words when i say saved i know I, of course i mean not in the, the the way in which we talk about the word saved i'm talking about church members church goers and so when you are uh, you just you, you really don't want to get serious with god you know you just you're just there what happens is that you are under the influence you are under deception so now look at this had blinded the minds of them that believe not blindness is quite interesting because i realize that every person jesus came into contact with there are some people who were sick that he let that would you know they didn't get healing but there was no person who was ever blind did not receive sight this is how important sight is to jesus let me tell you why it's important because you cannot wage war if you can't see and we have a lot of seeing blind people i hope you understand what you call sight and what god calls sight is two different things what you call sight is your ability to see each other what god calls sight is your ability to see him in the year king Uzziah died i saw also the lord there was this man who was in a particular city that was known for its spiritual blindness he was in a city called Bethsaida and what happened is that the Bible said they brought him to Jesus look what Jesus said Jesus took the man and carried him out of the city you ever wonder why he did that he carried him out of the city then he touched him and asked him if he saw anything now many of us read that we say Jesus didn't pray that day because Jesus had to touch this man twice that's not that's not what happened because what happened is Jesus saw that this man was blind twice. <laughs> uh, he was blind twice. So when he led him out of the city, he touched him. And here's what the Bible declared. He asked him what he saw. Here's how I know the man was spiritually blind. He said, now I see men as trees. So now his, his spiritual sight is back. How do I know that? Because when you talk about trees, trees in scripture is used as a housing, a resting place. Uh -huh. and so it was a resting place for different entities. So in other words, on a tree, both, thank you brother, on a tree, both a clean bird and an unclean bird can rest on the same tree. So his spiritual eyes was open because he's saying, I see people and they're walking around and it's as though they have no control who's resting on them because they're so blind they don't even know when they're being used by the enemy some of you watching me like you don't know what i'm talking about listen sometimes your own your own family is a tool in the hands of the enemy you're not gonna say amen 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 sometimes sometimes the people that are closest to you the people that you trust the people that walk with you this is why david said if it was an enemy i i i would have accepted it but he said it it came from somebody who who walked into the house of god with me yeah, because the enemy is always looking for weak links around you uh -huh. so he said i see men as trees walking they are they they, they don't even understand that they are being used for both light and darkness because they are under deception and a biblical example of that is peter you know peter jesus asked the question who do men say that i am peter said you are the christ mm -hmm. the son of the living god he said blessed are you peter for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you by my father in heaven then the very next thing jesus said i'm about to be going up to the cross and to be crucified the same peter 
who a few minutes ago said you are the Christ the son of the living God is the same Peter that said be it far from you Lord <laughs> and Jesus looked at Peter this is why I love Jesus he looked at Peter and because he knew the voice of the enemy he said to Peter get thee behind me Satan <laughs> so in, in warfare you have to know the voice of the enemy so much that you, you can know when he speaks to people mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so so when you he said get thee behind me Satan it, in the Greek is so powerful because in the Greek the rebuke was so sharp the disciples around didn't know if he was rebuking Peter or if he was rebuking Satan himself because in that in that moment they were both one And so part of warfare is understanding that I'm not wrestling against flesh and blood. I, I understand now that when you call me and we talk and I begin to meet somebody, I, I, I try to channel to get what spirit they are of. Yes. You, you, you see, the, 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 my God, should I teach on this? You, you, you have to understand church that if you were to listen carefully the Bible declares a wise man will hear and increase learning and that word increase is so powerful because it means that based on how you listen will determine how you grow and so deception is one of the ways in which the enemy captures people now let's look at the other one now that one deception is the lost and the lost lost and there's another one that I want to look at is called delusion and so if he cannot deceive you he will delude you the word delusion is so powerful because it speaks of to seduce it, it, it literally means to be caught in error and so there are people who may be in this church you know sometimes Christians say they come in the house of God and they have another brother or sister that also have the Holy Ghost mind you and you're talking about my, my spirit don't take him <laughs> meanwhile your best friend in work is a witch Selah yeah 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 because we don't have we, we we have eyesight but not insight and if you have to be, to be successful in war you have to have more than eyesight you have to possess insight what does god say about it he's a liar the devil is a liar you see because what he tries to do he tries to fool us into thinking that the thoughts that we're thinking is our thoughts Mm -hmm. but he's a liar I'm not ready yet I'm not ready yet don't worry I'm not ready yet delusion look at look at first Peter yes yeah, first Timothy yes he said now the spirit speak expressly that in a latter time some shall depart from the faith mm -hmm. given heed look at this to seducing spirits I'm showing you the three categories that, that the enemy puts people in the first one is deception the second one is delusion you're wrong but you think you're right that's delusion yeah, yeah, you know there, there are times as a pastor the Holy Spirit may wake, us, may, may wake me up and give me a word and he has he puts in my mind the brother or the sister brother listen it's not easy to be a pastor brother he, he puts in the mind of the preacher the brother or the sister that this word is for you come and you minister by the power of the spirit and everybody else fill the altar except some of you listen the altar filled and the, the brother or sister that the word is for they're in the seat and they put the, the stretching hand as point of contact 
that we, we the enemy has so uh, uh, tormented or so captured our minds that we are unable to even open up to receive from God so these are these are people that may know the light may come to the light but they don't plan to do anything about it Paul said an heir as long as he's a child is no different than a slave so in other words if you are a believer and you don't want to grow you're in the same category of the heathen and so seducing spirits let's look at the third one finally and then we're gonna we're gonna yeah let's look at the third one uh, the third one so if he cannot deceive you because you're saved sanctified filled with the holy ghost walking in truth he will try to delude you so this is where the pharisee spirit comes in and he comes and he tries to make you build your own religion amen and so if you if he realize that he cannot do that because you are anchored in truth he goes to his last resort do you know what his last resort is distraction if I cannot deceive you and I cannot delude you I will distract you and so these are the people that are genuinely born again they know the word of God and what happens and let me tell you the one common denominator in all of this lies those who are deceived are living a lie those who are deluded are believing a lie and those who are distracted are affected by lies and I wonder if we understand what the Holy Ghost is saying those who are deceived they are living a lie those who are deluded are believing a lie and those who are distracted are affected by lies he's a liar and so what happens is that he comes now and he comes and he tries to tell you you're saved but you're sick you're, you're, you're saved you know but 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 this is going on in your marriage you're saved but 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 look at your family you're saved you, you're, you're talking about you're saved and you know God but look your child going to hell this is he's a liar and so what happens is that many people at that time we tend to believe the lie and then that gives him access now he has legal rights why because of your will so the moment you believe the lie you now invite him and he has access into your life to distract you the devil is a liar you see sometimes we we, we, we tend to think that because hallelujah we, we are saved and we're in church it means that we're unaffected no 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 that's not what happens he uh, he tries to distract you and so what happens he comes to you now and he he tries to hear what you know <laughs> tell me about yourself because the number one method the number one weapon of a liar is his ability to talk you know there are some people that can real talk in the moment you, you decide you want to get serious with God all of a sudden that boyfriend from high school the sweet talker the smooth operator you know, all of a sudden he tried to give you a call. Amen. You're not gonna want you're not gonna say amen. I know what I'm talking about in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yeah, yeah. He calls you, and all of a sudden, oh baby, you've been on my mind. <laughs> He's a liar. And so what happens now? He comes and he tries to persuade you to, to, to move out of the course. You know, there are they, they, listen, there, there, there are some there are some people. Oh God, <laughs> the, 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 the enemy, listen to me. This this devil's so nasty. I want you to take note of this every time you're about to enter into a new place what he does is that he comes and try to make one last ditch effort so most times it is people that you trust he comes and he say boy you, what about this church thing why are you every Friday you in every day you in church why you come like you go? And, and all of a sudden 
you are now distracted. Let's look at James. You adulterers and adulteresses. Know you not that friendship. This is what he tries to, he tries to bring to you. Friendship with this world. Mm. My God, let me, let me take my time here. The word friendship in the Greek, it means fondness. And so in other words, if you are looking at this world with any fondness, at that moment, you are literally an enemy of God. You see how dangerous distraction is. And so what happens is that as long as you are distracted, you are no, of no benefit. You have no use. You know, what happens then is that you know you are now a tool of Satan. Amen. Amen. And, and so what has to happen is that we have to allow the Holy Spirit to take us out of that place. Don't be deceived. Don't be deluded. Don't be distracted. He, he comes and he has you believing. And I want you to understand that lies does not mean that the information is false. Mm -hmm. let, 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 me, let me break down what, what the biblical term for lies are. He can give you accurate information and yet it cannot be truth. Let me, let, let me, further, let me further break that down. The, the book of Isaiah, he said, who shall be, whose report will you believe? So in other words, what he says as facts as long as it's not co-signed by God, it's not truth. Are you understanding what I'm saying, church? So in other words, when I receive information, the first thing I have to do is to go to the Word of God to verify whether this thing is truth or lies, even if the information is accurate. Ah... Ah, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So in other words, I may be, and let me tell you something about faith. Faith does not deny facts. Faith defies facts. Mm -hmm. So in other words, faith says, yes, the doctor said this. And I acknowledge that. I'm going to take the medication for that. But in the meantime, I'm going to do this go into the word of God to see whether this thing is facts or truth uh, uh, are you understanding what I'm saying I'm trying to teach you warfare this is warfare now I'm teaching you you have to know how to wage war with the word of God and so in anything that is out of the word of God though it may be fact it is not truth so I wage war with truth, not facts. And so yeah, the facts may be that I'm young. Hallelujah. But truth says, hallelujah. In the last days, he will pour his spirit upon all flesh. My sons and daughters will prophesy. Facts says, you may be ill. But truth says, he was wounded. Hey, glory. He, he, oh, hallelujah. Truth says, he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. Facts said that this spouse died. But truth says mm, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you going to believe facts or truth? Because I want you to understand when he comes you have to know his voice and say to him you're a liar. Come on just shout that out. Liar. Come on. Come on. Say it like you have the Holy Ghost. Liar. You, you have to know Glory to God. There are some calls I know I cannot take. They are, they, they, listen, there are some conversations that I know I cannot have. Ah, because the one that is working with you is a liar. Ah, 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 ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I understand now. I know where to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 know, I know what to do now because I now know both God's voice. And the voice of the father of lies. Whose report? As I close, whose report 
people's reports what are you believing what are you believing that have you live in such a, a defeated Christian life what is it that you're believing that have you in bondage what is it that you're believing he said well Gil I know you're saved eh but you covered empty true is that true it may be facts I'm not gonna lie but it's not true because truth says I was young and now I'm old I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread yes 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 you're saved you know yeah you're saved yeah. you're saved eh? but look at that temper you're, you're, you're saved that, that may be that may be facts I, 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 you know I can't fly off the handle whenever ever so often but I tell you something truth is working on me and so that means that you're not gonna see me in that place for too long yeah 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 some of you you have, we have to learn how to talk back yeah oh hallelujah let me let me close let me close let me close let me close I, I sense so strongly that there are a lot of people you are believing the lies of the enemy. And how I know you're believing it is that you're living in it. And so though I'm in this world, I have a different currency. I, I operate by a different operating system. This world operates on Android. The spirit realm operates on the Holy Ghost. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I am now, I'm now in a different space, and so that means that truth is what I live by. What are you gonna believe? What are you gonna believe? Can we stand this morning? What are you gonna believe? believing the whispers of the devil he comes and he tries to get you what what he wants to do he tries to get you to agree with the suggestions and recommendations and as long as you agree with it it becomes your reality Know your enemy. Know your enemy. Do you realize that all Adam had to do is what Jesus did on the mount? <laughs> Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. If Adam did that, then we would have all had a different life. But Adam chose to believe the lies. And so today, and just for a few minutes, I just want to pray. And for anyone that, that, that desires prayer, really, maybe, maybe you want the Lord to open your eyes. As we pray, I want you to come. As we pray, I want you to come. As we pray. Come on, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, yeah, 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 come on, can we just lift it up this today? Lift it up, just lift it up, lift them 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 up, church, lift them up, lift them up, lift them up, lift them up, come on, all over this place, lift them up, lift them up, lift them up, hallelujah, hallelujah, I believe the report of the Lord, I believe truth, lift them up, lift it up, lift it up. Lift it up. Hallelujah. 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 Whose report? Whose report? Whose report? Come on, church. This is warfare. Whose report? The enemy has spoken lies for too long. Whose report? Who will you believe? Father, in the name of Jesus. Ah. 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 
the Lord is that spirit where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty come on everyone just reach out to him today reach out to him today come on come on come on come on don't be a spectator don't be a spectator come on come on come on he's a liar I said he's a liar he's a liar he is a liar Shakamanda yaba sato beko sakayama. He's a liar. He's a liar. He's a liar. He's a liar. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. This does not have to be your reality. The devil is a liar. What does truth say? Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! My God, 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Spirit of the living God. 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 He's a liar. He's a liar. He's a liar. He is a liar. Ah, Kayabasa. I rebuke the voice. I rebuke the voice of the liar. Ah, in the name of Jesus. I rebuke the voice of the liar. I rebuke the, the voice of the liar. He's a liar. He's a liar. He's a liar. Father, in the name of Jesus. Ah. Your number one strategy is growth. Your number one strategy is growth. Grow, grow, grow. And Jesus increase and wax strong in spirit. Grow, grow, grow. Don't just grow through it, grow through it. Grow through it, grow through it. Grow through it. He's a liar. He's a liar. He is a liar. In the name of Jesus, Father, rebuke the liar. My God, rebuke the liar. 